Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Suited Shootist. And what I do want to touch on today is my findings, at least my initial findings, based on playing around with the, uh, the shoulder holster at uh, the Immediate Action Combatives seminar that I took up in Austin. So there's just a couple main elements on this that I want to touch on because I think a lot of the criticism of the shoulder holster is stemming from misunderstanding. There are definitely some downsides to it, but it's not what most people think it is. So let's jump right into it. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, at uh, what was it? I guess last month up in Austin, Cecil Birch came into town and uh, put on his seminar, and so I attended it. And on the, for the course of the second day, I ran it with a shoulder holster. Now I didn't run it with this particular shoulder holster, but shoulder holster nonetheless. And um, from playing around with this Andrews Custom, um, my experience with it has been similar to the DeSantis that I ran through the class. The, the first big criticism that people talk about is draw speed with the shoulder holster. Now, admittedly, you are not going to be getting the same kind of uh, speed, you know, draw to first shot that you will out of an appendix rig. Just from a physical standpoint, from whatever starting position, the hand has to travel across the body and you've got to make sure this is up and out of the way. So there is a lot more movement, even done efficiently, you're going to be hard pressed to do it in the same time frame. But here's the thing, when you're talking about entanglement, it doesn't matter to a degree. Uh, Craig Douglas talks about timing decisions in ECQC. And basically, very high level, what that is, is that you need to make sure that there is a sufficient window of controlled time for you to do whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, it's very much akin to the position before submission mantra, where you need to make sure that you are in a position of dominance, that you have control over everything that's going on before you try to choke or armbar or whatever else. Firearm's no different. So before I go to the gun, I need to make sure that my opponent who is also trying to win, trying to keep me from winning and has free will to do whatever they want, can't do whatever they want. And so that is where limb entanglement and things like that come into play. I don't want to go too deep into it because honestly, it starts veering into the curriculum and that's why you should take the class. But point being is that the draw time, especially in the context of an entangled fight, is not as important because it simply is the same reality that you need to be in a good position and make a good timing decision. The only distinction is that the timing window for something like this has to be substantially larger than for, say, an appendix or a strong side draw. And there's a couple other considerations to that as well, which dovetails into the next piece of this that I discovered. If I am going to employ a firearm from a shoulder holster in an entanglement or in this close proximity. Based on my experiences from the class, I would much rather still be physically attached to the person so that way I can tie up limbs and do what I need to do because if you try to shove off and then make enough distance to get the gun out, that's where the draw time started to be uh, a bit more of a drawback. So when you're physically attached, it matters, but not as much. Once distance is introduced, then it becomes a bit more critical. The last thing, and I'm kind of saving the best for last here, is one of the major criticisms of shoulder holsters is that you are handing the bad guy your gun because it's oriented literally grip forward so that somebody standing in front of you can reach out and grab the grip of your pistol. Whoever is using that critique understands nothing about grappling because this was just 
this dawned on me on the drive up there before I even actually went up against an opponent. I'm thinking, okay, if somebody has to grab my gun that way, they're reaching their arm forward. If you've done any wrestling or any Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know this opens you up for so much that it is a gift to the other person. You know, it's they're giving you an arm drag. And so from a weapons retention standpoint, if they do manage to actually get a hand on the gun, I can get an underhook and still control that limb to the point where I can keep the gun from coming out. Or if I'm able to intercept it ahead of time, I can arm drag, get their back, and then tie them up to the point where I can bring the gun into play and use it at my leisure. So again, it helps to actually understand all of these elements if you are going to start developing a true grasp of the pros and cons. Next video that I'm gonna do is gonna be on some of my kind of concealment observations because uh, as you notice, I've got this riding substantially lower than, uh, than I did in kind of the, the teaser introductory video. So I'm gonna touch on that next time, so stay tuned for that. Let me know what questions you guys have. Obviously, this is not a full review of the class that is coming up. And uh, aside from that, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp.